In this tutorial, we are going to solve a very interesting question under rotation work, energy and momentum. Okay, so here is the question. The question needs the question is saying a wheel of radius six centimeters is mounted so as to rotate about the horizontal axis through its center. A string of negligible mass wrapped around its circumference carries a mass of two hundred grams attached to its free end. When allowed to fail or to fall, the mass descended through 100 centimeters in 5 seconds. Calculate part A, the angular acceleration of the wheel, part B, its moment of inertia, part C, the tension in the code. Okay. I always tell you guys to say when we're dealing with physics, first come up with data. So in this case, let's first come up with data. Data is the one which is going to help us to, to find the what? the missing variables. So now, do we have the radius? Yes, we do have. The radius is 6 centimeters, but we can convert that one into meters, which is going to be what? 6 divided by what? 100, which is going to be 0 0.06. 0 0.06. Okay. What else do we have? Okay, we have the mass. Okay. We have the mass, which is what? 200 grams. So 200 divided by 1,000, we are going to get 0 0.2. 0 0.2. What else do we what else do we have? We have the displacement which is hundred centimeters divided by hundred is going to be one meter. Then we also do have the time which is what five seconds. Okay. Now the disc is rotating as you can see. The disc is rotating. When the disc is rotating, then you are applying a force. Definitely we expect to have the um the inertia. Or we can say we expect to have the torque. Okay? So now we know that torque we know that torque is given by the force times the, what, the perpendicular distance now in that case the perpendicular distance is the radius so that that force uh, that uh, force which we are talking about is the tension force so i'm going to say ft okay so i'm going to say that another formula we know that we have two formulas for what the torque Another formula for torque, we know that it is inertia times the angular acceleration. So this torque and this torque which we are talking about, they are the same torque which we are talking about. So what we are going to do is we are going to set them equal to each other. Okay? So this torque which we have, we are going to set them equal to each other with the torque which we have this side. So we are going to say that the tension force times R is going to be equal to the inertia times the angular acceleration. Now, our goal is to find the angular acceleration. But first, what I'm going to do in this case is uh, we are going first to find first we are going to find the inertia. Okay? So what we are going to do is uh, let's solve for tension uh, let's solve for tension force in this case. So we're going to say that Ft or oh, let me do this. We can just divide here with uh, we divide here with what with R, even here with R. So we know that if we divide that one with R, we are going to get that the tension force is going to be equal to the inertia times this one is equal to this. Okay, cool. But we need to understand again one thing. We don't have the angular acceleration. But can we calculate the linear acceleration? We know that linear acceleration is given by the angular acceleration times the radius. So to find angular acceleration is going to be A divided by R. Meaning that I can replace this guy with the A which I have. Then I can say that the tension force is going to be equal to the inertia over r times this one i'm going to put this so r and r i'm going to get r squared so i'm going to have the tension force is going to be equal to uh, the inertia times a over r squared so i can put this one here I can get rid of this okay let me get rid of this and then i put this formula there ft is equal to inertia times the linear acceleration divided by r squared Okay, cool. Now, we need to understand again that eh, when this thing was releasing from rest, gravity want to put it down. Okay, so we have the force of gravity, which is pointing here, mg. Okay, then the tension force is directed upward. So we are going to have the net acceleration since it is descending, meaning we expect to have the acceleration which is going to be negative. So what are we going to do? What we are going to have is a uh, we are going to say that the sum of all the forces in y direction, when we add them, they are supposed to give us negative mm. Okay? Now, that negative m because the acceleration is going to be negative, that's why I've gotten that part, ma, as negative. Because the acceleration, I'm going to have negative because it is descending. 
Okay, then what else are we going to have? We need to understand that the forces which we have in that line, we have two forces. The tension force pointing up, the mg pointing down. Now the mg is going to carry negative, the tension force is going to carry a positive because it is pointing up. So I'm going to say that the Ft minus the mg has to be equal to negative has to be equal to negative what? Negative ma. My goal in this case is to find the Ft. Okay? So to, to make t Ft a subject of formula, I'm going to say that Ft is going to be equal to I'm going to say that if this one comes that side is going to be positive. I can just say mg minus ma. Now, this Ft which I have here, guys, is the same as the Ft which I have there on top. I can set them equal to each other. Okay? So I'm going to replace mg minus ma where there is what? Ft in the first equation. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to have is this. Let me get rid of this. Okay? Now what I'm going to have is where there is Ft, I'm going to put mg minus ma is going to be equal to the inertia times a divided by r squared. Okay, we are done with this part. Okay, now our goal is to find the inertia. Okay, so what are we going to do? We can cross multiply. After crossing multiply, we can see that this one is the same as it's going to be. I can just factor it out and say this. Then I have inertia times a. Let's divide both sides by a divide both sides by m. So our inertia is going to be equal to the r squared, open brackets, mg minus mm, close the brackets, then you have over m. But now, how can we find, we don't have a again. How can we find the a? Let's put this formula here. We have inertia is equal to r squared, mg minus ma, and then we divide this one by acceleration. So let's get rid of this. How can we find the inertia? Sorry, the angular, the linear acceleration, this A. We know that this thing, we have been told that it was released from rest. Meaning that what is going to happen there is that if it was released from rest, what is going to happen is that it's going to cover a certain distance, then it reaches there. So it covered a distance of 1 meter. It was released from rest, meaning the initial velocity is 0. So which formula can we use for us to find the, uh, the acceleration? We know that this formula can work. We have d is equal to v initial times t plus half a t squared. We have the time, but we don't have the initial velocity. Initial velocity is zero, so we can cancel this. So we're going to have d is equal to half a t squared. Our goal is to find the value of a. What are we going to do? Let's do times two everywhere in this equation. Or before we do that, we can just plug in the values. So what what is our displacement? It is half, or it is one. That is the uh, the distance is equal to this one is going to be half. Then you, the the time is five now square it times a. Okay, so what are we going to have? We're going to have five squared. Then we divide this one by two, which is twelve point five. So we have one is equal to twelve point five times a. Let's divide both sides by twelve point five. Even here by twelve point five. So we're going to have the acceleration is going to be equal to 1 over 12.5. So what is 1? Okay. What is 1 over 12.5? Okay. So the acceleration I'm getting is 0 0.08. Okay. So this is going to be meters per second squared. Okay. Cool. That is the acceleration which we, we have gotten. Okay, so we are saying that the time which we have been given is 5 seconds, and then we have the displacement which is 1. As you can see, I've put 1 there. Then the 5, five squared is 25. Then 25 divide 2, which is going to give us 12.5. So that is the acceleration which you have. Okay, so now if we have acceleration already here, before we even go anywhere, we know that if we have acceleration, then we can calculate the what? The angular acceleration. Because we know that linear acceleration is angular acceleration times r. So angular acceleration is going to be a over r. So it's going to be this. Then acceleration, we have found that is 0 0.08. Then the radius, what is our radius? Okay, our radius is 0 0.06. So what is 0 0.08 divided by... 0.06 it is 1.33 so our angular acceleration is 1.33 lad per 
second squared. That is the answer for part A. So you can first start finding the angular acceleration or the linear acceleration and then find the angular acceleration. Now this linear acceleration which we have here, 0 0.08, is the one which is going to help us to find the what the inertia. Okay. So that is the formula which we have. We no longer need this data here. I can get rid of this. Okay. So now what we have here guys is we have the inertia is equal to we want to plug in the values now what is the radius the radius is 0 0.06 we square it open brackets what is the mass okay the mass is 0. what um we have said that is 200 so 200 divided by 1000 is 0. 0.2 so we have 0. 0.2 times 9.8 minus 0. 2 times z. the acceleration we have found that is 0 0.08 0 0.08 then we divide this one by the linear acceleration okay yes the linear acceleration which is also what 0 0.08 so what I'm going to do is 0 0.06 squared then I'm going to open the brackets or we can do what is inside 0 0.2 times 9.8 then minus open brackets we have 0 0.2 uh, times 0 0.08 okay so on top there i'm getting inside only so that one times 0 0.06 squared so on top only i'm getting um 0 0.006 uh, 9 I'm getting 6, 9, then 9 again, 8, 4. Don't round off before the final answer. Then this one divide 0 0.08. Okay, so 0 0.08. So the moment of inertia, which I'm getting here, is, uh, is uh, 0 0.0, 0 0.0, 0 0.087. Okay, so that is the moment of initial. Now, you can now round it off to maybe three significant figures if you want. So you can say that eh, the moment of inertia is going to be equal to 0 0.087, just like this. Now, what are the units for moment of inertia? Remember, we are saying that inertia, inertia is given by mass times the radius. Mass is kgs. Radius is what? Eh? Or it is squared. So, Radius is meters, but now it's supposed to be meters squared. So these are the units for what? Eh? Moment of inertia. Okay. So our answer is this one, which is going to be in kgs meters squared. So that is the moment of inertia. Now, part C, which is part 2. We want to find the tension of the cord. Remember, we found the tension, the formula for tension, which is here. That's why I didn't even uh, remove this one, because I knew to say we are going to, to use it. So that formula is the one which is going to help us now to find the tension. Okay. So that formula, which is, uh, is uh, the tension force is equal to the inertia times acceleration is equal to R squared. So the tension force is going to be equal to the inertia is 0 0.087 times the acceleration we found is 0 0.08. Then we divide this one by the radius, which is 0 0.06. Now we square it. So we have 0 0.087 times 0 0.08. Okay, 0 0.08. Then the answer, we divide it 0 0.06, we square it. So I'm getting my tension force as 1.977777 newtons. I can just say that the tension force is going to be equal to 1.8. 1.98 newtons thank you for making it to the end of this video if you enjoyed the video and you wish to access the other videos on the other topics all the way from vectors to thermodynamics or the last topic that you're going to cover in physics do register with us and you also have access to all the tutorial sheet questions you have solutions to them they're all covered in video form and also past paper revisions that are about to start upon the completion of the last topic that you're going to cover in your physics course be it 10 15 or 10 10 and you have access to all these at only 100 quacha until you write your exam of course not forgetting that upon registration you are allowed to text your questions to the tutors 
and of course you have access to the solutions which allows you to prepare even more adequately for your exams.